Hello, everyone. Um, this is the weekly call for Orbit. The goal today is to figure out what we want to do in the next few months uh, with Orbit. If you open the Etherpad, I'm going to put that on IRC. Oh, it's already there. Thank you. So let's just go through kind of what, what's there at the moment and see what that means. Um, basically, my wish and idea for the next quarter is to make Orbit usable for other than prototyping purposes so people can actually use it. We just um, managed to get Orbit to a state where it's completely serverless, completely distributed, completely on IPFS, and that's that's been a goal for for that project for about a year now. And so we're finally at a point where we can start making it a, a real thing, right? So all the issues or goals that I've, I've listed on my wish list is, or all of them are basically work towards making Orbit usable for a small team, which is the first goal. Um, this is an overarching goal for pretty much everything, and we, uh, yeah, that's kind of like the main goal. Um, what that entails is, it would be really nice to have a place where people can uh, download Orbit and start using it. Right, right now you have to do a lot of npm uh, hoops and loops and install stuff, and it's slow and things might be broken every now and then and so on. What would be much better is that you, or we have a URL where you can download a uh, build that is already compiled and includes all, all that stuff um, that you would normally do with the re for right now. So that's one thing. Uh, there has been requests for making a simple website for it so that we can put the actual build links to it um, and kind of point people to somewhere where they can start digging deeper into the code or or just basically download it. Um, and then on Orbit side itself, there's a few organizational structural things that I would really like to do. First one is to separate the UI from the Orbit repo. Um, it's there for historical reasons, but I think it would be time to take it out and make it a separate project. Victor. So why why you want to do that? So <laughs> the, the, the next one, uh, Orbit.js, the core of Orbit, is actually one file about 200 lines of code, and it works as a separate module. So. Um, the idea is that we have one module for doing that communication stuff, the, basically the Orbit chat protocol um, in itself, so that we have a module that you can use to build other UIs. So for example, the text UI, the, the terminal UI that Juan showed earlier, or the different kinds of um, bots that do stuff on the network and so on. And now they're all together, like the Electron version, the JSIPFS version, the core co code of it, and so on. That's basically why they need to be separated. Cool. Um, and then recently, we got more people actually interested in Orbit. So thank you for everyone who has tested Orbit uh, in the re le um, last few weeks and reporting issues it's been fantastic to see how it breaks everywhere um but one of the key things is windows I, I think it's time to give some love to the windows side of things we haven't done anything um to make it work and so we're basically shooting in a dark here at the moment and i would like to make it so that it actually works for windows users as well um that might come with some work to other mm, JavaScript ecosystem packages, mainly Go IPFS dependency. Um, and then, you know, maybe we get some work to Go IPFS in itself from this. I don't know, but like, heads up. Um, 
what else? Then I would like to add more testing, more kind of fixing um, little annoyances here and there and make the user experience really smooth in a way that you don't have to guess whether it's working or not, you know, whether you can connect to other people when they clearly sit next to you and you're chatting on the same channel. Um, uh, one of these uh, performance uh, related to the data transfer. So with the pops up, we're now sending the hashes of the messages and we want to send the actual messages over reduce already one round trip from the whole thing. And apparently, um, Jeremy and Juan were saying that uh, it'll be a lot more um, stable also. So that's kind of cool. I, I really want to do that. Um, namespacing the channels. Right now, all the channels in Orbit are just one string, basically the, the name of the channel. Uh, and they get translated into pop sub topics. So namespacing them in a nice way that we don't clash with anything and there's an all of these have issues often on on github so discussion can can happen on individual items there um let me see then yeah few kind of small but important ui ux um improvements like adding a date separator um, cause you know, it gets confusing if you come back online and you see the messages weren't yesterday, but you only see the timestamps. So you're like, these are old or new messages and it gets kind of wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, Orbit and IRC. I don't think I will personally have time to work on this, but there's been few people in the community that have expressed interest. So basically the idea here is to figure out a way how Orbit can be used together with IRC. Not as a, as a bridge as, as you would normally do it so that there's a server somewhere running an IRC client and, and handling all the communication because that involves setup for, for the users. I would like to find a much better solution where you just kind of launch Orbit and then join, say, slash IRC slash IPFS, and you get on the actual IRC channel. And it works both ways. So you get messages from IRC, and you can post messages on IRC. There's a few difficult things there, like identity and um, kind of, um, yeah, identity is one of them. And that kind of boils uh, down to how you architecture it. But I would be really, really happy to see people working on this um, in the next quarter and make that happen. And then, um, yeah, basically, like cache emojis, um, the, the emoji icons is one of the examples of what we should do. These are kind of, may seem small and they're kind of chores, but at the same time, they're all related to the user experience that you get with Orbit. So for example, if you have Orbit right now, the, the application, and you start it when you're offline, the fonts are not displaying, the emojis are not displaying because they're not cached. They're, they're downloaded from URLs from where they were taken. So it would be really nice to package them into the um, build itself so that once you download Orbit, it actually really works completely out of the box. Um, and then one more thing is bots. Um, last quarter, I spent quite a bit of time to make sure that uh, you can easily write these bots, and it's now possible. The only missing piece is the separating the Orbit core into its own module. So then you can just uh, npm uh, install it required, and you have the whole Orbit communication layer uh, without the 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 and the so what what I have um, on my wish list is there anything anyone else would like to add to orbit itself like um, features or whatever yeah I have a quick question you said uh, I just missed it in the audio recording because your, your audio broke up. 
bots, you spend a good amount of time on them, now spending a separate one, now it's separating a separate quarter so you can NPM I without what? What did you just say? You can basically NPM install the Orbit communication code. Right now you can't do that. Like it's not on NPM as a package. Victor? So you mean making it easy for doing it, writing bots? Exactly. Yeah, uh, so I do have uh, three, three points I wanted to talk about when it comes to Orbit. Uh, first is the, the overall UX, like not about the fonts that is loading, but like how a user actually uses Orbit and try to understand how we can make it. I mean, it's, it's a bit confusing with the, for example, the replying, I think. And with, finding, with replying, there are some confusing elements, uh, and I think it would be good if we, we do uh, a process for the user journey in the application rather than uh, just showing up everything in the in the beginning completely empty to do a sort of onboarding in the application to make it easier to understand. So I think, Peter, uh, if I get you right, I think you think it would be pretty useful to have like a um, user, not necessarily user storyboarding, but like um, actually like a clear look into uh, all these different types of, of design decisions for the user experience of the product and how this all fit together um, and other potential things that we may do there or um, am I getting that right? So kind of like product design. Yeah, exactly. Thinking about the, the product features that we want to, to have instead of like rushing step by step, take a step back and look at like what could Orbit be if we actually think about the kind of problem that we're trying to solve? Not sure what you mean. Can you elaborate on that? So, for example, a, a quick thing to do would be to just look at the different chat clients that exist today, uh, take the best uh, features of those, and try to make something similar to that before Orbit would have its own identity. I think what uh, we're starting to get at is right now all of that product design is happening in your head suddenly, and other people don't have access to that. Uh, and uh, oftentimes there's other things that people are noticing are potential problems that you may not be noticing or something. Uh, and Orbit needs to get to the point where um, like the decisions are made around you know something like replying or something like you know various things are kind of like documented uh, and discussed so that things can be highlighted or shown as, hey, maybe you should be, you should be going in this direction, or here's a, a set of features that sound like really valuable, um, or how do those fit, and, and so on. I think, does that kind of make sense? That totally makes sense. So I've been trying to output all of my ideas and kind of the direction into the issues on GitHub. So to me, that sounds like there isn't one clear place where you could go and see like this is what Orbit would look like. Does that? Yeah, I, th I think um, I think this just means um, so. There's like writing writing about one feature and kind of like describing the need of that one feature and so on. And that I think you do an awesome job at that. Like that's that makes sense. I think um, and maybe I I may or may not be understanding Victor right, uh, but I think uh, what is desired is kind of like a product design perspective at it of like here are all the potential different pieces. Here's like the user flow. Here's like, you know, the set of screens that happen. You think about it kind of like wireframes or like a, like a, you know, like a tree of, of, of changes so you can get to see like the whole set of pieces put together. Totally understand. And it's something I actually started in. There's a design notes document, but it's not very far. But this is, this is something we, we totally should do. Um, basically a, yeah, like a product design uh, document. Uh, Matt? One way that I often think about that part of the process is that it's about narrative. It's about building up stories. Uh, more than just like the, the agile sense of stories, it's about building a, a narrative about who is using the application, what is their experience, and that might be storyboards, it might be, there are a lot of different ways you can collect that information, but it's more like there's a thread of design discussions and decisions that are about framing that narrative. And um, it sounds like you're, what you're, to you're stepping around, stepping into it is, is giving a space for that conversation to happen. Yeah, sounds really good. Um, Victor, does that 
answer all of your questions or points? Yeah, I think it'll, I think. Uh, it, just like the, I don't know, the first experience for the user, you know, and just making it simple for people to use. I think it's very important when we are building something for end users. You know? Absolutely, totally agreed. Um, anything else, Juan? Uh, I think one thing that I would love to kind of dive down and, and do, so there's, you already listed a lot of the, the kind of hurdles that people have right now with um, using Urban and so like uh, making a website for it, downloading it and so on. Uh, I think one, one meta thing that we can do that can be super useful, similar to like a product design thing, is to do kind of like this, just sit down and, and, and go through all the different pieces together um, as a group, like maybe you know, three or four of us that like care about this um, and like just and really enumerate what all of these different pieces need to be. Like um, a thing on, the, on, on distributions, um, a, an auto-update auto mechanism within the Electron app so they can actually like update itself without having to have the user redownload it. Like there's a ton of these things. Um, uh, you know, bugs that come up when people install it and try to use it. Like, just like sitting together and kind of like working through all of that, um, I think would probably be kind of like generation of these, of these cards might be super useful together. Uh, so far you've been doing all the heavy lifting on that and we haven't been, we've only like had spurts of like helping, but it might be really useful to sit down and like have like a dedicated like look at, like kind of like audit the whole thing and be like, okay, um, from user hears the word orbit and gets a link to the user now chatting happily. Um, what are all the touch points and what are all the pieces that need to, you know, we need, that need to be in place? Yeah, we'd love to do that. Um, let's get that process started this week and find a place to, to have that discussion with, with the community included. I know there's other people who are not in this call who would be very happy to participate in that. Uh, Friedel has been waiting for a long time. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to say something um, on the on the user experience quickly uh, before we move on. Um, this is one of the, the features of Slack. This is one of the one thing that made them very successful is how much and how well they did user experience, how well they did onboarding, um, and things like that. And there is just a lot we can learn from this. Uh, even if we personally don't agree with the choices Slack does make. Um, the general sense they, they made of how to understand their users is very, very good. And something we should aim for with Corbett if we want to make it an honest and real replacement for things like Slack Zares. Agreed, definitely. Matt, you had something? I was just gonna suggest with this, the discussion before Friedel commented the, uh, that product design thing, maybe have a milestone on your roadmap for some sort of deliverable from those conversations having happened that, that you'll whether it's a design document or whatever um and then actually put it on your roadmap so that people see where it where it is in the pipe. yeah that sounds really good i'm i'm super happy that we're finally at this point that we can discuss these things <laughs> okay so anything else anyone regarding the the features or if not, let's continue on the agenda items. So Richard added readmes, uh, one readme for all awesome repos. Can you elaborate on that, Richard? Yeah, we covered that in the last call on all hands. It's just basically documentation and how we're going. Okay. And I'll yeah. talk to you about that, so let's not worry about it. Cool. Uh, solid doc. okay. Uh, people are asking, being able to load Orbit with a link. Should we discuss this for a little bit? So I, I totally agree. This would be a fantastic user experience. You give a link and they're chatting. Like, that's all you need. That would be ideal. Um, what that requires is Orbit working with JSIPFS. And in the, in the last um, few weeks, as we integrated PubSub and all these kind of experimental stuff, that was kind of dropped out. So there's work that needs to happen on Orbit side to make it work again with JSIPFS. And there's work that needs to happen on JSIPFS side to be compatible, mainly PubSub. Um, I don't know exactly what the status of that is, but as soon as it's in, I would be more than happy to get it merged and, and start using it and start working on this part as well. David? Um, one more thing that uh, needs to be added to make that experience really, really good 
uh, is Relay. So, um, and this will come in the JSIPFS chat and how we should like develop JSIPFS for the next quarter and how we should like set our priorities. But like essentially we need Relay to be present uh, on GoIPFS so that like people can like load um, JSIPFS in the browser and like connect to the rest of the network without like seeing any problems. Um, yeah. Totally agreed. And I, I think there's a quick solution for that, which is the bots. If we can make the, if the interop works with JS and, and Go, we can run the bots who are kind of catching the channels. So then you at least have something there that can kind of pass through the, the things. And while it's not an ideal solution, at, at least that would get us started while we kind of implement the relay stuff. And, and so, one. Uh, Couple things. One thing where the bots come in. Sorry, one second. Sorry. Uh, one part where where the bots come in, <clears throat> you can put them actually out. Once encryption comes in, you can put them outside of encryption, and they're really just relaying the ciphertext, and so they actually can look in. So not all bots will do this, right? So, but some bots can be just bouncers of data. Um, and they could potentially do this for like channels that are new, right? Um, so one piece. The other thing I was going to mention um, is oh man, I'm forgetting. Sorry, it was like important. <sighs> oh, um, PubSub. So the the question is is PubSub in JS there and working and and as well as GoIPFS? It is not integrated on JS IPFS, but we have peer to peer for sub working and interoping with um, the IPFS PubSub. So it's just a matter of like integrating. Uh, Gavin also has been working a lot on like the PubSub testnet. And also there is like some work there to integrate or like to put our PubSub over that testnet and like test several topologies, make sure that they are not doing mistakes like, like using too much memory or not like cleaning out um, stuff that we should be cleaning. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of work there. We know that we have interop. Uh, we have the primitives. Well, the, the last thing I was working on on PubSub was really when we eat the interface discussion because um, I was like creating a different interface starting from the WP2P of WhatsApp and then um, the interface that Jeremy built for WPFS was different. And yeah, now, now we know which interface it has to be and I understand why. Uh, and we have basically to make that interface uh, happen uh, on the JS side. Is that the interface that we wrote down in notes or is that the interface of GoIPFS? Um, it is the interface that we wrote in notes. Uh, I'm, busy, I'm more specifically talking about the way that subscriptions are made and how they are canceled. Remember, uh, I was um, with the idea that like, it would be beneficial to have and for to start a subscription and then one another to cancel it and and then like one endpoint to subscribe to the feed of a, a given subscription um, but apparently it is um, better for the developer if the subscription gets cancelled if the request on that subscription gets cancelled as well um, if it, this is confusing for everyone I'm sorry but there is notes about this. <laughs> no, no, it makes total sense, and I agree with that. Right now, we had to do kind of a hack in JS IFFS API to track the the subscriptions. So if we if that can be handled on in a restful way in the API, so that we don't keep the state in JS IFFS API, that would be fantastic. We'll keep the state on JS IFFS API. I was more in favor of the restful way. Uh, but like Juan and Jeremy uh, pointed out and really made the case that like having IPFS nodes with subscriptions hanging, like just there without anyone like checking what they are subscribed to can be very heavy on the network. So it is better like if you drop the request, just like to drop the subscription. Um, and I, Fair point. Um, Fair and we can make that state happen because like we also don't want two requests for the same feed. Uh, so we, we have to make that happen on JSIPFS API, and which will be the same thing that gets offered by JSIPFS. All right, got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Richard? I have another thing I'd like to talk about with Orbit. Is it OK to move on, or? Yes, I was just going to propose that. And I also have one more thing, and we got three minutes, two minutes, so be quick. Thank you. Mine's quick. Uh, we talked in the elevator about this earlier. 
metrics for IP for Orbit, seeing how many users there are, how many rooms there are, can this be done, and should it be on the roadmaps? Okay, so my take on that is that, first of all, we don't want to track users in a way that it's done normally in these kind of applications. Um, there, so like basically that means no Google Analytics or any similar component in any part of the, the code base. However, what we could do is use Orbit to track Orbit in, in a way that we can make it completely anonymous, uh, no IPs, no usernames, just knowing that there's a new user somewhere um, joined in. Um, might be difficult and I haven't really thought um, the whole thing through, but we might be able to do something. If not, then we just got to live with that for now. I, I personally put the privacy of the users above getting metrics. So we need to figure out some kind of a good solution here. Juan? I think the way to, to approach this is to think about the social networking aspects of Orbit and think through how to structure that, right? Because there, there could be a very natural way to do this, which is like friend lists, right? So when you have a friend list, you can, uh, and then some notion of like whether it, it's public that you're listed on a channel or not, right? And so you could easily like start traversing and navigating to other channels by seeing who has what or certain directories, right? You can actually choose to list your channel in, in a directory yeah. and that's a voluntary thing. Totally agree. Um, there, there might be a good solution for this. We should open an issue in Orbit and discuss this. Last point before we um, end. Uh, this is not actually Orbit related, but Orbit DB. Since Kex is here, I wanted to point out that he's been working on an implementation of IPFS log in Go, which is the very core, most important component of this whole stack. And I guess the idea there is um, to build Orbit DB and maybe eventually Orbit in itself in Go completely. So I don't. We haven't discussed yet about the details, but it it's there, and maybe after this quarter, we already have a much better idea what what that will end up being. Kex, you don't have to talk if you don't want to, but if you want to say something about this, that would be fantastic. Um, hey, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, basically you said that. Um, I'm, I think I'm personally more interested in making Orbit DB than Orbit itself. Maybe like some CLI stuff, but I'm not the GUI person. Um, yeah, maybe other other applications than chat are also interesting for me. But yeah, we'll see. Adam, I need to get Orbit DB ready first. <laughs> Very cool, and thank you for starting that work. I'm looking forward to. Um, get it further, that's fantastic. So, that was it, we're one minute later. Is there anything really important to say or do we call it quits? One, one more thing. People love Orbit. Like, it just blows people's minds every time I show it to somebody and they're super excited about the possibilities. Like, they really get it. Uh, when you tell them, hey, this is, peer-to-peer -peer distributed, has no servers anywhere, like that is a big deal. Um, I know, I've been, I've been trying to say this and this is why I'm so happy nowadays because we, <laughs> we're finally there. <laughs> so, but thank you, that's awesome to, to hear. And um, let's, let's as, a, as a team and as a community, let's make sure that we really make it a cool thing for, for everyone to use. And, finally get the, the future of the web in, in the way it was so always supposed to be, right? Cool, so let's move on to the next call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for getting us back on, on schedule, HUD. I think we also might have a great, a great gif of all of us nodding in unison. <laughs> <laughs> we should save that.